The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. <laughs> Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. LSMFT. 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 Of course. That's it. Right you are. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And remember, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, first, last, and always, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Independent tobacco experts present at the auctions can see Lucky Strike consistently select and buy the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. From the historic city of St. Joseph, Missouri, the Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, today Jack Benny is in St. Joe. Perhaps some of you may have forgotten the story behind this great event, so I'd like to take you back about three years to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. Jack was comfortably sitting in his big easy chair reading his scrapbook, <laughs> while Rochester was straightening up the house and singing a popular song of the day. My mama done told me when I was in knee pants, my mama done told me, son. A woman will sweet talk and give you the big eye. But when the sweet talking's done, a woman's a two-faced, a worrisome thing who leads you to sing the blues in the night. From Natchez to Mobile, from Memphis to St. Joe. St. Joe, they love me there. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how it all started. And now, three years later, here he is in person. St. Joe's favorite adopted son, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And folks, I want to tell you, this is the greatest reception I ever got in my life. Okay, I'm so proud, my chest is almost out to my underwear. <laughs> Yes, sir. Ah, oh, don't blame you, Jack. Here we are during our program in the largest auditorium in town. They've even given you their hometown band for the broadcast. That's right, Don. Is it any wonder that I'm so happy to be here in good old St. Joe? <laughs> hmm. Uh, where were we, Don, before you we were You were just saying how happy you are to be here, Jack. Oh, yes. What a welcome I got when I arrived. You should have been with me, Don. The train pulled into a siding, they slid open the door, and we all ran down the ramp. <laughs> how, how happy we Jack, were. Jack, uh, did you say you ran down a ramp? Yes, how happy we were. Wait a minute, Jack, who ran down the ramp? You and who else? Me and the cows. <laughs> how happy we Jack, were. Jack, do you mean to say you arrived here on a cattle train? Cattle train? Certainly. When you saw all those cows, what'd you think it was? Well, I... I didn't exactly know, but I did feel they were overdoing that share the ride business. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, were we crowded. But, Jack, I can't understand you're making the mistake of getting on a cattle train. Didn't anybody stop you? Yes, yes, some fresh cowboy. He opened my shirt, stamped grade A on my chest, and herded me in. <laughs> and with those sharp sticks, you know. <laughs> but it doesn't matter how I got here as long as I'm in good old St. Joe. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! 
Wait a minute. For heaven's sake, fellas, you don't have to play that tune every time I say good old... Look, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Now, look, fellas, I know you're glad to see me, but you don't have to blow your brains out. After all, we're trying to do... Hello, Jack. Hi, everybody. Hello, Mary. How are you? Say, say, Mary, they love you here, too. Isn't that nice? It sure is, Jack. But I've never seen a town go all out for anyone like this town has gone for you. Ah, it sure is exciting, Mary. Did you see those big banners all over town that say, Welcome, Jack Benny. Three cheers for Jack Benny. And we love you, Jack Benny. Did you see them? See them? I was with you in Chicago when you had them painted. <laughs> Mary, you're just making that up. You know very well they love me here. What about that parade that was given in my honor? Jack, was that parade in your honor? Certainly it was. And you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Selling hot dogs. <laughs> Mary. And you got mustard all over the chief of police. Well, if Chief Swepson didn't mind, why should you? Anyway, you know, you... Don! Don, what are you laughing at? Oh, just thinking about Jack. He came into town on a cattle train. Jack, you didn't. Well, it was all a mistake. By the time I found out, we were here already, you know. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, Jack. Do you mean to say you rode in a cattle car without even knowing it? Mary, when I ride on a train, I don't look around to see who's sitting next to me. <laughs> <laughs> However, I did get suspicious when I rang for the porter and he came in on all fours. <laughs> you mean it was a cow? I don't know, but I asked for milk and never got such quick service in all my life. You mean you got it? Right in the eye, sister. Right in the eye. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Mary, you're making fun of me. No, Jack, I think you're awfully cute. Anyone could have made that mistake. Certainly. Well, all right, Jack. I'm convinced that it was all a mistake. But if you'd stayed with me, you wouldn't have had to ride on a cattle train. Don, if I'm going to ride with a load of beef, what's the difference what train it's on? <laughs> and I wish Larry would come in so we, we would stop this silly talk. Hello, Mr. Benny. Thank you. Hello, Larry. How are you? Listen to that reception, kid. Isn't that a wonderful audience out there? Oh, it certainly is, Mr. Benny. And you know what, Larry? Everybody that came in here to see this show had to give a pint of blood. Well, did it help you get over your cold? <laughs> they didn't give it to me. They gave it to the Red Cross. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Benny. That's all right, kid. Anybody could have made that mistake. Like coming here on a cattle train. Certainly. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Larry, have you been having any fun here in town? Oh, I sure have, Miss Livingston. I've been seeing all the sights, and this afternoon I even visited Jesse James' house. You did? Yes, but Mr. James wasn't home, so I left. <laughs> Look, kid, Jesse James has been dead for over 60 years. He has? Then why are they charging a quarter to go into his house? Because he still has an FHA loan on it. <laughs> Go ahead and sing your song, Larry. I'll take you to Lover's Lane afterwards. And sing especially nice in appreciation of the way they love me here in good old St. Joe. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. For heaven's sake. For heaven's sake, I forgot about them. Sing, kid. They drive me nuts. No kidding. I've never seen them. Oh, oh. 
Stephen singing Sweetheart of All My Dreams. And very good, too. They love you here, kid. Mr. Benny's right, Larry. St. Joe loves everybody. Oh, they sure do, Miss Livingston. In fact, last week, the St. Joseph News Press printed a big picture of Fred Allen on the front page and told about how funny he was when he played at the Crystal Theater. Hmm. Fred Jack, Allen. Jack, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know Fred ever played St. Joe. Yes, yes, he did, Mary. Allen was playing the Crystal Theater... And at the same time, the bags under his eyes were making a personal appearance at the Orpheum. <laughs> what, what an act he had. That was the first time the stockyards ever complained. <laughs> no kidding. You know, and another thing... Hi, you folks. I think you know me, but this is Missouri. So come on, show me. Yeah. This is Missouri. Oh, Jackson, listen to that applause. That's what I like about the South. <laughs> well, that was a cute entrance, Phil. And by the way, I've got a little compliment for you. Everybody liked you on the Fitch bandwagon last week. Well, thanks. And you know, Jackson, them Fitch people were awfully nice to us. You know, after the broadcast, they gave every one of my musicians a case of shampoo for a present. Well, that was darn nice of them. A whole case? Yes, and my guitar player says it's delicious when you cut it a little with ginger ale. <laughs> Phil, Phil, you mean to say that Frankie drank the shampoo? Frankie will drink anything. He's the only musician I know who strums his guitar with a corkscrew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, Phil... I haven't seen much of you since we hit town. Uh, what have you been doing with yourself? Well, Jackson, I've been on the other side of the river. I was over in uh, Elwood, Kansas. <laughs> well, what, uh, what were you doing in Kansas? That's a dry state. I know. I wanted to see how the other half lives. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Well, Phil, how are you enjoying yourself here in St. Joe? Ah, uh, it's a great town, Jackson. Great. You know, this is a very historical place. You know, this is the home of Jesse Jones here. <laughs> That's Jesse James. <laughs> Jesse Jones, my goodness. Say, Jack, didn't they use a lot of local scenery in that movie they made about Jesse James? Yes, Don, I remember that picture very well. They wanted me to play the part of Jesse, and then, strictly through politics, of course, they took Tyrone Power instead, you know? <laughs> well, why didn't they take you, Jackson? Because every time they shot a gun, his toupee blew off. <laughs> Mary, that wasn't a toupee. That was my mask that blew off. Since, uh, since when does a mask have Bobby's pins? Bobby's, Bobby's pins. pins. Bobby's pins. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, that's Bobby pins. It's not Bobby's pins. They don't belong to Bobby. You know what I mean? Very funny, huh? 
You know, Mr. Benny, for an outlaw, Jesse James was a very romantic figure, wasn't he? What'd you say, Larry? I said for an outlaw, Jesse James was a very romantic figure, wasn't he? You're right, kid. Jesse James, I can just see him now, holding a crowd at bay, a look of defiance on his face, and in each hand, a smoking pistol. That's right, partner, and they were smoking lucky strikes. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, what has Jesse James got to do with lucky strikes? Well, he was free and easy on the draw, too, wasn't he, Sheriff? <laughs> Look, I'm trying to tell Larry some historical facts about Jesse James. You see, kid, he always carried two guns, and everybody knew that Jesse James meant business. Yes, and everybody knows that lucky strike means fine tobacco. When you say that, smile, partner. <laughs> yes, lucky strike means fine tobacco. That's better. <laughs> now, getting back to the... So, um, Mr. Benny, did Jesse James really live here? Yes, Larry, you saw his house. He lived right here in St. Joe. Gosh, did they love him, too? Well, I don't remember, kid, you see. Anyway, at first, he led a very normal, peaceful life. Uh-huh. But then he got mad and started on a rampage. And do you know why he got mad? Because Kansas was a dry state. <laughs> Look, Phil. <laughs> Phil, I'm trying to tell Larry the story of the... Oh, my goodness. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I'm Phil Welch, the mayor of this city. Well... Well, it certainly is a pleasure to meet the mayor of good old St. Joe. All right, All right, that's enough. Well, I'm pleased to meet you, Mayor Welch. I'm sorry I didn't recognize you. Well, I recognized you immediately. I saw you when you played here in Vaudeville, and I thought you had a very funny act. You did? Well. In fact, I laughed so hard I almost choked on my lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very good, Mayor Very good, huh? Thanks, Jack But I really came here on behalf of the city To make you an honorary president of the Chamber of Commerce Well, this is indeed an honor I've never been so thrilled Here's your membership card, Mr. Benny Say, say, just look at this Jack Benny, Benny honorary president <laughs> Of the St. Joseph Chamber of Commerce and your membership fee is a dollar a year. Oh. A <laughs> dollar a year? Yes. But look, uh, I'm only going to be here a week. Uh, how much will that be? In fact, I'm actually going to be here only four days, but why quibble, you know? <laughs> well, Mr. Benny, we never figured it in weeks. Oh, well, of course, Mayor Welch, I don't live in St. Joe... Uh, what's your rock-bottom price for non-residents, huh? <laughs> Mr. Benny, one dollar is absolutely the lowest dues we've ever collected from any president of the Chamber of Commerce. Well, <laughs> I like to be sporting about those things, you know. <laughs> Good. Uh, well, here's 50 cents. Make me vice president. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I'm glad you dropped around. Huh? Thank you, and good night, Jack. Yes, good night. Sir. Yes, sir. Hey, Mary, wasn't it nice of the mayor to give me this card and it was worth 50 cents? Look what it says on it. The holder of this card is entitled to one ride on the Pony Express. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Half Buck Penny rides again. <laughs> Don't be so smart. I'm vice president now of the Chamber of Commerce. Well, if you'd given the whole dollar, you could have been president. Well, he'd rather be tight than president. <laughs> now, cut that out. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in my official capacity as vice president of the Chamber of Commerce of St. Joe, it is my honor to bring you one of our native daughters, a young lady who happens to be visiting here in our hometown, a very famous movie star, Miss Jane Wyman. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Jack. It's really an honor being introduced by a four-bit vice president. Well, you're welcome, Janie. And say, I was right when I said you were born here in St. Joe, wasn't I? Oh, yes, Jack, 28 years ago. 
And just think, when I was born, you were just a little seven-year-old kid running around Waukegan. Oh, oh Janie, don't make me younger than I really am. I, I was eight at the time. Huh? His father was nine. Oh, quiet. I merely asked Janie if she were born in St. Joe. Yes, Jack, and there's something I ought to tell you. The people here don't like their city to be called St. Joe. They don't? No, no, you see, it's like San Francisco. They like to be, they don't like to be called Frisco, and the people here like their city to be called St. Joseph. Oh, now, Janie. St. Joseph, but Janie, that would be silly. Silly? Why? Well, how would this sound? From Natchez to Mobile, from Memphis to St. Joseph, <laughs> wherever the four winds blow, sir. <laughs> See what I mean? No, sir. No, sir? <laughs> if this keeps up, I think I'll go, sir. You stay here. <laughs> anyway, Janie, it's nice that you're with us in your hometown. You know that everybody in this audience had to give a pint of blood to see this show. Well, you've raised your prices, haven't you? They didn't give it to me! <laughs> I mean, why does everybody think that? In the first place, there isn't a man living who can take 4,000 pints. Wait a minute, Jackson. Frankie and I... I'm not that. talking about that. Say, Janie, how about you and I going out for a good time after the broadcast? You know, we had fun the last time we went out together, didn't we? Oh, yes, Jack. But, well, I don't know how to say this, but to have a good time, you've got to spend some... Uh, well, uh, well, for instance, last time we were out, remember what happened with a jukebox? Nothing happened. I put my nickel into that jukebox like everybody else did. Yes, but, Jack, wasn't that a little corny standing on the table yelling, This music comes to you through the courtesy of Jack Benny. <laughs> Janie. Star of stage, screen, radio, and the biggest hot dog in St. Joe for a dime. <laughs> well, I just did that for a gag, that was all. Oh, say, Jack, I just happened to think of something. Weren't you and Miss Wyman in that picture, uh, Hollywood Canteen? Yes, Don, but we didn't work together. You know, Janie, I have a little confession to make. When they started the picture, I wanted to do a love scene with you. So I spoke to the director. Well, I have a little confession to make, too. I spoke to him first. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Osa. Osa. You know, Jack, I appeared in my last two pictures with Jack Carson. And gosh, he's wonderful. Jack Carson? Mm -hmm. He is, huh? Oh, yes. He's so big and strong. Well, being big and strong isn't everything. But Jack, he's so handsome. So what? Beauty's only skin deep. You know. And he's so young. Well, I know lots of people who prefer the more mature type. But Jack Carson is so funny. Janie, don't fence me out. <laughs> and if you want to know something, in my new picture, my leading lady is Alexis Smith. Gosh, she's so tall and stately. You know? Yes, I know, Jack. And I heard about your accident when you were doing your love scene with Alexis. Accident? What happened, Jack? <laughs> he fell off his box while he was kissing her. <laughs> I didn't fall. She pushed me. Anyway, Janie, I'll bet you and I'll be in a picture someday because I'm going to... Oh, there's the phone. Excuse me, Janie. Don't forget, after the show, we'll all go out together. And... I'll take it. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. <laughs> Hello, Rochester. Where are you calling from? My hotel room? Well, I'm in the hotel, but I'm not in your room. I'm outside in the hall. Well, what are you doing out in the hall? You know that suit you wore on the cattle train? Yes. Well, I'm waiting for the dry cleaner to come and drag it out of the room. <laughs> but Rochester, I thought he was going to be there this morning to pick it up. Oh, he was, boss, and it's the first time a dry cleaner ever called for a suit and didn't have to say, where is it? <laughs> Oh, then he picked up my suit? No, he went back to get a long hook. <laughs> a long hook. Rochester, does my suit smell that bad? Smell bad? I opened the window and it set spring back three months. <laughs> well, 
Rochester, my suit isn't as bad as that. If the cleaner doesn't come back, you brush it up yourself. Okay. And say, boss, you know that big banner outside the hotel with your picture on it? Yes. Well, somebody came along with a shotgun and gave you a bad case of measles. <laughs> what, you mean they shot holes in my face? Yeah, you got the only face in town that can sift flour. <laughs> Rochester, I traveled 4,000 miles to get to St. Joe, and shooting or no shooting, it's your job to keep those banners up there. Oh, boss, if they want to love you, let them, but let's not force it on ourselves. <laughs> I'm not forcing myself on them. They invited me to come here of their own free will. I knew free was in there someplace. <laughs> Look, now look, Rochester, I want you... Hold it a minute, boss. The cleaner just came back, and he's fishing for your suit with that long hook. That's good. So now I guess everything will... Uh Uh-oh. What's the matter? The suit grabbed the hook, picked up the cleaner, and is running down the hall with it. (laughs) What? Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? (laughs) It certainly does. Goodbye. Goodbye. Dog, got it. If I find pumps in my hamburger, I'll know where my suit went. Play, Phil. Go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, as the casualty lists pour in from the European war fronts, We at home are putting behind us all thoughts of an easy victory. Then comes the struggle in the Pacific, and our top military authorities say it will require another year and a half to two years to lick Japan after we beat Germany. So to you and me, all this means only one thing, all-out support of our fighting men. In other words, stay on that wartime job until released. Keep buying more and more war bonds and hold on to them. Keep supporting all home front activities and observing all wartime regulations. And with it all, write encouraging letters to him over there. So he'll know a united nation stands behind him. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first, here is my good friend, L.A. Speed Riggs. Smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. And this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real, deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. (laughs) And Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. (laughs) And this is Basil Risedale speaking. L.S.M.F.T. L.S.M.F.T. L-S-M-F-T. Make no mistake, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Well, folks, our pleasant visit in St. Joe is just about over, and we've certainly enjoyed every minute of it. And I want to thank all you wonderful people here for giving us such a swell reception. I'm sorry I haven't time to mention the names of all those who have been so nice to us. But you see, St. Joe has a population of 75,711. So you know what I mean. (laughs) Next week, we'll be in Colorado. Wednesday night at the Fort Logan Hospital. Thursday, Peterson Field at Colorado Springs. And Friday night, we'll see all you boys at Laurie Field. And next Sunday, we'll be broadcasting for military personnel at Fitzsimmons General Hospital in Denver. We'll see you then. Good night, everybody. My mama done told me when I was in knee pants. My mama done told me, son. I wanna...